Hello and welcome to this video on DSP Builder for Intel FPGAs. Today we will be reviewing a high performance polyphase channelizer design. During the course of this short video, we will show how DSP Builder for Intel FPGAs is used to create high performance designs. So let's get started. DSP Builder for Intel FPGAs is a dig digital signal processing tool that enables the generation of an RTL implementation of DSP algorithms directly from the Simulink graphical environment onto Intel FPGAs. The tool generates high quality synthesizable VHDL and Verilog code from MATLAB algorithms and Simulink models. The generated RTL code can be used for Intel FPGA programming. You will see with several examples that as we explore the solution space, the timing of our models in DSP Builder ensure high performance results. DSP Builder for Intel FPGAs is widely used in radar designs, wireless and wireline communications, medical imaging, and motor control applications. Today, we will review a high performance polyphase channelizer design. A polyphase channelizer takes a wideband signal consisting of multiple channels and filters it down to multiple narrowband signals. This makes the downstream processing of the narrowband signals more efficient. During this video, you will see how DSP Builder enables a productive design methodology. You will see how easy it is to capture and verify your design. We will review the initial high performance results and then see how easy it is to change bit widths, data types, and even silicon targets and still achieve automatically high performance results. Today we'll hear from Dan Pritzker. Dan is a system design engineering manager at Intel and he is passionate about multidisciplinary systems. For many years, Dan has worked on a wide variety of industrial, robotic, machine learning and wideband signal processing systems. He has performed these roles as a developer, as an architect, and now as the system design engineering manager here at Intel. Dan graduated from Tel Aviv University. Let's get started and hear his insights on using DSP Builder to implement a high performance channelizer. Hey, my name is Dan Pritzker, and I'm going to show you my favorite tool for development of DSP systems. Developing DSP systems on FPGA is not a simple task and it spans multiple technical domains. You need to understand signals, different mathematical concepts, have a deep FPGA architecture understanding, and be familiar with FPGA implementation tools. As a result, having a system level tool at your disposal that can glue together the development process to a seamless flow should be very beneficial. I believe we have such tool, and I am happy to show it to you today. I am going to open a polyphase channelizer design that I prepared for this demonstration. In this webinar, I am going to focus on implementation of polyphase channelizer targeting Intel FPGA. I will show you a simulink based tool called DSP Builder, which I believe can help you to design your DSP applications targeting Intel FPGAs. You will see how complex DSP algorithm design for FPGA can be simplified. You will see how you can significantly increase your design and verification productivity while achieving exceptional hardware performance results. DSP Builder is a plugin to Simulink. It's a library of blocks that you can use to build a model of your system. There are multiple levels of abstraction to those available modules. For example, the primitive basic blocks are fundamental design elements like counter, combinatorial function, bit level operation, and memories. Moreover, it includes a huge collection of mathematical functions like trigonometric, logarithmic, and many more. It's even more extensive than it sounds. Almost all of them support a wide variety of fixed and floating point data format. They support complex and real data. They also support vectorized and scalar inputs. I will show you all this in the demo. In addition to Primitives Library, DSP Builder comes with more comprehensive fully configurable IP like FFTs or any other useful functional block for system level integration. First thing, I would like to provide you very brief explanation of what Channelizer is. Focusing on the image in the bottom left, let's assume you have a wideband input signal. 
it can be a communication signal with many individual bands or just partially populated spectrum. We want to take the wide band signal and break it down to many narrow band signals. It allows simpler and sometimes more efficient downstream processing. Conceptually, we need to perform a bandpass filter on each slice of spectrum and then down convert to baseband. So on the high level, we are sending the wideband signal in and getting many narrow band slices at the baseband. Let's examine the canvas of Simulink further. On the left, there is a model of signal generator that will be used as a stimulus for our design. You can generate single or multiple tones signal that will go into the channelizer. To illustrate the operation of the channelizer, I will configure it for two tones with equal magnitude at frequency of 50 and 300 MHz. The block on the right is a model of viewer that will show us the output of channelizer. It performs a data reshaping and plot it while simulation is running. Now we're going to look into the actual channelizer implementation. To help us to understand it better, I will run a quick compile to allow MATLAB to elaborate of some of the design connections. This is what we call a component level. For a simple reason, we have a block that defines which specific FPGA device we want to target. You will see in a few minutes the importance of it, since it will allow DSP Builder to select most optimal silicon features for your device estimate resources, and most importantly ensure the design meets your requirements in terms of FMAX. Everything on this level of hierarchy and below will be automatically generated code that can be used in your FPGA design. This is a place to explain the key advantage of DSP Builder. DSP Builder is timing model aware. You as a designer tell it which frequency you need the design to run and the tool will ensure your requirements are satisfied. It means the tool can take most optimal decisions to fit your requirements at much earlier stage than placing route. Moreover, if the tool realizes you are not expected to meet your target FMAX, it will tell you it in early stage without the need to do a full compile. This ability allows you to iterate orders of magnitude faster of your architecture and achieve your targets. Let's take a look into some aspects of DSP design. As we shown before, we need to implement bandpass filter. We can look into this task in conceptually different but mathematically equivalent way. First, we can design bandpass filter through transform of low pass filter by spinning the coefficient and performing upconverting of them. Then, because of these operations are linear, it's the same thing as taking low pass filter output and spinning its output samples rather than its coefficients. It will produce the same result. If you look into the algebra of it, you will see that these spinners are the same operations that consist in FFT function. We engineers like FFT because of its efficiency. So in this case of channelizer, we are just using FFT as a cheap way to implement these frequency spinners. Let's talk about polyphase approach to the design. Let's say your FPGA can run at maximum of 500 MHz, but we want to process the signal at 4 giga sample per second data rate. In many cases, it's possible to partition a processing pipeline so we calculate multiple samples in parallel and in a way can process data faster than a fundamental FPGA operation speed. Here's a classical example where we can partition FIR filter. The filter is rearranged to span across multiple phases while each clock cycles will feed M samples at a time. Then, at the same way, we apply polyphase FFT to perform a sample spinning as I described before. Going back to component level, I would like to show you how architecture maps into DSP builder blocks. Here you see a polyphase FIR, which you set the number of phases, provide filter coefficient and other parameters. It will decompose the filter into polyphase structure. Next, it followed by FFTIP, where again you set the number of phases, FFT lengths, etc. This is pretty much it. Now let me point out a few details related to connections and data format. We can see that those thicker lines represent a vector. To be more specific, the C in the brackets indicates the data is complex. 
In addition, 8 in the brackets indicates that each connection is actually a collection of 8 wires, or in our terminology, phases. I think you can see the power of how easy it is to design with those wide, complex polyphase data streams. This builder will detect what data vectors are coming in and then implement processing function adjusted to the data format, saving you an enormous amount of time to do it manually. Let's run a DSP Builder compile. During this process, the DSP Builder will generate all FPGA RTL level design and then perform a model simulation. Here you can see the results of the simulation produced by Chanlizer when we have two tones fed into it. The plot shows our two tones without any visible energy leakage outside of the populated channels. This is actually a correct functionality of our Chanlizer. This is good. Here are the hardware resources estimation. You can see it's broken down to individual blocks. Now let's try to experiment what impact reduction of data widths on the input will have on operation and resources. I will change the input to 10 bits instead of 14 bits. And now we'll run the simulation again. As you can see, there is some decrease of FPGA resources and you can now evaluate if this is the right architecture decision versus your signal quality goals. Now let's do another experiment. Let's say we want to process data faster, or in other words, double the number of samples we process each clock cycle. I will modify the number of phases to 16 instead of 8. Now we'll run the compile and check the changes in the required FPGA resources. Again, this tool allows you to make a data-driven decision very fast. So far, I showed you how this builder allows very fast architecture exploration. Now, I would like to show you the advantage of the tool being timing model driven. The tool knows to analyze required pipelining and insert them into critical paths. What that means for you that you don't need to iteratively perform place and route and then pipeline not just pipeline, but also adjusting latencies across processing branches. The tool will do all this for you. To illustrate it, I'm just going to change the device to faster speed grade. This means that the tool needs to insert less pipeline to meet required of 500 megahertz. Next, I would like to address some of industry assumptions about high-level design tools. It's clear they are a huge productivity accelerator, but it's at the expense of performance. I would like to claim it's actually vice versa. Modern FPGA are quite complex, with many considerations designers need to be aware when it comes to features of the DSP blocks, routing considerations, etc. It's practically very difficult for designers to learn and remember all the rules at micro level. We build this tool that are aware of these rules and can reason and take a best optimization path to implement user requirements. As a result, it has higher probability to lead to higher performing design. To show you one data point on it, I have a design compiled and I can show you it can meet push button performance of required 500 megahertz on dash 3 device. This is very good result. Another point for consideration I would like to raise is how you can create a design that is future-proof. Here in Intel, we're constantly looking for ways to improve the IP and FPGA devices. This means that with each new generation, we'll bring more sophisticated and feature-rich devices. Designing with DSP Builder today will ensure that you will, just with a flip of a button, you can target a new or different device and take full advantage of its new features and capabilities. Let me show you an example. Agilex FPGA has a third generation of floating point capabilities that is hardened in each DSP block. We can just tell DSP Builder to execute design using floating point format. It will automatically remap all the IP to desired floating point format in a way that all the possible floating point operations will be implemented in the hardened DSP block. Again, after running compile, we can see what impact it has on FPGA resources and the algorithm. To summarize, I showed you how a complex DSP subsystem like a polyphase channelizer can be implemented on a PGA using a DSP Builder tool. 
It allows much faster development cycle. It facilitates data-driven architecture decisions and achieves very high performance implementation. By starting to use this builder today, you will achieve optimal and future-proof implementation. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. As you have seen, the easy to use features of DSP Builder enable you to quickly and comprehensively search the design space for the best design without sacrificing any performance. We encourage you to visit the Intel website where you can learn more about the Channelizer applications, Intel Agile X FPGAs, and DSP Builder for Intel FPGAs. To learn more about MATLAB and Simulink, please visit the MathWorks website. Here you can learn about support for Intel FPGAs and review additional success stories, including on ORAN development. Thank you for watching this video.